Hey everyone and welcome to the channel. So in front of us, we have the 2023 BMW M4 CSL. CSL stands for Competition Sports Lightweight. This model is finished off in Alpine white and they have a starting MSRP at $140,000. Now this is based off of the BMW M4 competition with a lot more goodies and features to make this the track focused version of the M4 comp. So underneath the hood, it still utilizes the three liter inline six cylinder twin turbo paired to the eight speed automatic transmission. However, this model here bumps up boost by 24%. So this pumps out 543 horsepower, the same 479 pound feet of torque. This is 240 pounds lighter overall, which we'll go into once we get to the exterior styling. All wheel drive, of course, weighs in closer to 3,600 pounds. Zero to 60 is 3.3 seconds. Top speed is 191. So again, a very track focused and even better handling car than the M4 Comp. And that is saying a lot because the M4 Comp is in alone in itself an extremely capable vehicle. So as we work our way to the exterior styling for this particular model, the CSL gets the massive carbon fiber front spoiler running across the entire front end and massive inlets. There's carbon fiber for the ones just each on each side of the kidney grill that is completely exposed with CSL on that one side. This has the 50 years badge up front, even parking sensors too, which is nice. But I think the great subtle touch is the red striping outlining both of the grills. I think it blends it in very nicely with this exterior white. This has LED headlights, DRLs, and turn signals, of course. And then for the hood, we have a darker red stripe surrounding either carbon fiber or the, car, or the composite material that the hood is made out of. It's very lightweight, so it's nice to see that's one of the weight uh, limit factors for this. There's even more inlets on both sides and an M4 CSL badge on the very outer corner of that spoiler. Now for the side, this sits about a half inch lower than the normal M4 comp. So it's going to handle a little bit better, of course. We have a staggered setup for the wheels, 19 up front, 20 in the rear with the red calipers. You can also opt for the carbon ceramic disc brakes too. This has carbon fiber for the power folding side mirrors with the integrated turn signal, carbon fiber on the roof with more of the red striping, and then gloss black for the window trim and the lower side skirt with more of the dark red finish. The M4 in general has a really nice side design to it with that coupe look and I love all the lines flowing down. Start on the M4 trim piece that's just behind that front tire. Now as we work our way to the rear, there's another 50 years badge with the backup camera integrated into it, the CSL badge. This has LED taillights along with carbon fiber for that lower diffuser and then the quad tip dual exhaust. Now let's get back to some of the weight savings that this model has over the M4 Comp. So we have no rear seats, which you'll see. That saves 46 pounds. The carbon fiber bucket seats saves 52 pounds. There's carbon fiber reinforced plastics for the interior, saves about 10 pounds. And then with the lightweight suspension, that's about 45 pounds. Obviously there's some other components in there too, like the carbon fiber roof and even this trunk lid. So if I open this up, it is now power operated, but there's the carbon fiber there. It is a lightweight trunk. Now this is a track focused M4. However, you could use this maybe as a daily driver. You could at least go to the track and place all of your items in the back or go to the grocery store. At least have fun driving it because you have a place to put items. You'll notice you can't fold anything down in the back since the rear seats are deleted and being very lightweight, it is easy to close. Now what's cool to see is this integrated duckbill spoiler that gives it a really cool flare. I love how that is part of the trunk because it's very subtle, but you can tell that of course it is there. Now for the interior, door panel is very nice with all the leather, the contrasting stitching, there's a trunk release, storage space, window controls, and some brushed aluminum accents. And now here we have the, uh, the non-adjustable carbon fiber sport bucket seats. You can slide them forwards and backwards, but that is it. No recline or incline. However, you can opt for the adjustable carbon fiber bucket seats, which will add back 32 pounds. So they weigh a little bit more, of course, than these non-fixed ones. Sneak peek at the rear. 
you have extra storage, a CSL badge, and that's it. So it's a two-seater now instead of a more practical four-seater. Beautiful seat though. All the carbon fiber and the leather. It's a little bit of a process to get up and over this part here, but once you are in, you're, you're in a go-kart seat. You are not moving once you are behind the wheel. Let's fire this up now. We can go over the normal information that you get in an M4. We have Alcantara for the steering wheel though, M1 and M2, which is nothing new, so you can have your more efficient drive to the track and then your track settings. We do get cruise control, tuning and volume for the radio, Bluetooth and voice commands, massive carbon fiber paddle shifters, even some more in the lower section. But looking at the digital gauge cluster, fuel and miles per hour are on the left side, right side is engine temperature and tack, and then you also have some more information that you can go through within this tack. So for a daily driver or even track driving, you have some vitals that you can easily monitor and get into. And then this is how the vehicle is currently set up. So if I confirm M2 now, you will see those adjust. And like I said, you can configure those as needed. You can see what gear you're in too. So it's nice to have that amount of usable space or usable information, especially for this type of vehicle. Now there's a little bit of storage over here where you could place all of your winning time track slips, headlight adjustments, heads up display too, which you can change both of those. So push on M mode and we have road and track track is going to adjust the uh, gauge cluster there so you can see what gear you're in along with the uh, double tack and then we have the uh, traditional view same with the head-up display it adds the uh, massive tack front and center if you hold on that for a few seconds basically track mode just shuts that upper screen off so you have no distractions but with it in road now we'll go back to home where you have some general information like your navigation and you have some other vitals that you can still look at. You can add some as needed. It's the traditional BMW setup. Now this is the previous model BMW, BMW technology. So we don't have the one massive screen for this model, which you don't really need, obviously, since this is more track focused. But you have all of your normal information. And then under vehicle, we can pull up some sport displays. So you can monitor all of that performance driving. There we go the performance driving characteristics there. You can even go to M menu, and this is how you can configure M1 and M2 to have everything set up the way that you would like to, including the brake feel. There's vehicle status, settings to go into, even driver profiles, and then you also have apps to go into, like Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. And then as you saw, I was using these buttons down below to further go through that if you need to use that. Now there's two air vents underneath. For this digital screen, that's all the climate adjustments, which are in brushed aluminum. Just above that though, this does have the intelligent safety. So for the road driving, you can configure that as needed. No heated seats, so that's missing on both sides. This has power and volume for the radio with all the presets, and then more carbon fiber surrounding the wireless charging pad with another auxiliary. And then there's traction control, parking sensors, even the engine start stop feature. This does get a backup camera, but that is it. No 360 view, still helpful to have. You have drive and sport mode, so you can use the paddles or the shifter itself. On the back side is park, and then you have different settings for the transmission, so you can adjust the shift points basically for this model. There's M mode and setup, exhaust note, auto hold, and the e-brake. Really nice CSL badge on the leather. A Little bit of storage with more carbon fiber. Take a look at the non-existent back seats there. Plenty of visibility for this type of vehicle. Plenty of room in the glove box as well. And so unfortunately, with this being only one of 1,000 units being produced, we are not getting this one out on the road, but let's jump into an M4 competition with the adjustable carbon fiber seats to see just how well these seats perform. They are very, very similar. These ones seem a little bit more aggressive, but nonetheless, we have a very similar design to them. So we can see what the M4 competition is like to drive in general with a very similar feel.
So I'm going to go ahead and put it into the sport mode setting where we have DSC off. It's in four wheel drive. I'm going to push on the M mode button here. And if I hold on it, we can go into track mode. So we activate track mode. We have the tack front and center along with what gear we're in. And with my foot on the brake, here we go. <laughs> that is that is quick that is a lot of fun Whew. and we are up to speed it tells you that launch control is activated on the heads-up display as well Wow <laughs> you can see too that that center screen went away so that way you have no distractions Definitely a lot of fun. I hope you guys enjoyed today's full walk around review and test drive getting behind the wheel of the BMW M4 competition. If you guys enjoyed it, give it a huge thumbs up and consider smashing that subscribe button so you don't miss out on our daily uploads as well as the rest of the videos that we have coming with this M4. I'll see you guys in the next video.